Okay, we are in Rosen, Discrete Mathematics and its Application, section 1.7 on Introduction to Proofs. And here we are discussing how to prove an implication in a number of different ways. First, we'll talk about some uh, special cases, and then we'll talk about direct proofs. So the first special case is called a trivial proof for the statement P implies Q. Uh, we know from the truth, truth table that whenever Q is true, that the implication P implies Q is true. So if we can show that Q is true, then P implies Q will be true. The example is, if it is raining, then one equals one. Well, that's going to be true whether or not it's raining. That statement is true because one equals one is a true statement. All right, the second special case is the vacuous proof. We talked about this uh, back when we were talking about the truth table for implication. And this is where, uh, whenever the hypothesis is false, the implication is true. So um, because of the vacuous case, the whenever P is false, then P implies Q is true. And here's an example. If I am both rich and poor, which is impossible, if I am both rich and poor, then 2 plus 2 equals 5. That's a true statement because the hypothesis is false. Okay, so even though these uh, seem uh, silly, they are both important because they are useful in certain other types of proofs, uh, specifically mathematical induction, um, which we cover in a separate course. All right, so the two special types, uh, trivial proof and vacuous proof. The next type is going to be called the direct proof. But first, in order to exhibit this proof, we're going to give another definition. And that is regarding even and odd integers. All right, definition. An integer n is even if there exists an integer k such that n equals 2 times k. And n is odd if there exists an integer k such that n is equal to 2k plus 1. All right, so that'll be the definition. Whenever we encounter an even uh, integer or not integer, we'll want to use this definition. Um, and again, every integer is either even or odd, and no integer is both even and odd. Okay, so we'll use these definitions in the in proofs uh, to follow. All right, here's a uh, here we go with a direct proof of P implies Q. In order to do a direct proof, we assume that P is true, and then we show that Q must also be true. Okay, so we will assume the hypothesis and show that the consequence must be true. Here's an example. It's an implication. If N is an odd integer, then n squared is odd. Well, in order to prove that, we're going to assume that n is odd. That's our, that's our hypothesis. So there it is, assume that n is odd. And now we're going to apply the definition. Then by the definition of odd, n is equal to 2k plus 1 for some integer k. And now we can do some math. We'll square both sides of the equation to get n squared is equal to 2k plus 1 quantity squared. And now let's square that binomial to get 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. Ah, but now we have this plus 1 that looks a little bit like an uh, uh, could be an odd integer, which is what we want to show. Remember, then we want to show that n squared is odd. And this other portion, we can factor out a 2 to get 2 times 2k squared plus 2k plus 1 is um, n squared. And we can replace 2k squared plus 2k with r. And r is an integer so that n squared equals 
2r plus 1 and r is an integer, therefore n is an n squared is an odd integer. And we've proven it. Leveraging the definition of an odd integer twice and doing some math. All right, so um, we'll should put this little black triangle here and that means we've completed a proof. We've done what we wanted to do to show that the statement is true. Um, sometimes you'll see QED, but in this textbook, uh, we use this uh, left-facing black triangle. All right, let's do another direct proof of a, of a P implies Q type of theorem. All right, so here we got a, a definition first. We say that a real number R is rational if there are integers P and Q and Q non-zero such that R equals P divided by Q. In other words, R can be expressed as a ratio, then it is rational. And the uh, denominator must be non-zero. Okay, so we'll use that definition in this proof. Prove that the sum of two rational numbers is rational. Well, one symbol for the rational numbers is this capital Q that I'll put over here. So I'm going to rewrite this theorem so that you can see that it is a, an implication. So I'm going to say use R and S. So if R is an element of the rationals and S is an element of the rationals, then R plus S is an element of the rationals. That's a restatement of the proof so that you can see that it's an implication. Now, how do we prove it using the direct approach? We're going to assume the hypothesis and show that the consequence is true. So here we go. We assume that R and S are rational numbers. And then once we have assumed that we apply the definition of rational and show that R is equal to uh, P divided by Q and Q non-zero, S is equal to T divided by U with U non-zero, and now let's just do some addition. Um, I think maybe I will try to erase I'm not going to be able to race. So R plus S then is going to be P over Q plus T over U, which when we get a common denominator and add them up, we get P times U plus Q times T over Q times U, which we replace with two integers V and over W. And since U and Q are both non-zero, W will be non-zero. And that shows that since V and W are both integers and W non-zero, that is the definition of a rational number. So the sum is rational. All right, so those are two examples of using a direct approach to proving an implication.